there's a similar sentiment that I always bring up whenever we have conversations about prospects and top picks and all that stuff. And I'll say it again for this video because I think it needs to be said in order to contextualize everything we're talking about here. Top picks in the NHL draft the past few years have really spoiled us as hockey fans. Seeing guys like Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel and Austin Matthews and Patrick Laine going out there and doing their thing right off the bat has kind of tainted our expectations into what first overall, second overall caliber players are supposed to be and what we should be defining these players as if they are not what that ideal mold is right off the bat. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at 2019. Jack Hughes, Capo Caco, these guys right out the gate were not Austin Matthews. They were not Nico Hischier. They weren't Connor McDavid or Lyonnais or Eichel. 2019 to me was the first year in a while where the top two picks were both critiqued heavily for their on-ice performance as 18-year-olds in the National Hockey League. In 2017, you could debate there was somewhat of a conversation with Nolan Patrick, but Nico Hischer was doing pretty all right, so I don't want to include those two as a pair in this convo. We also have ourselves 2018, which saw Darlene and Andrei Svechnikov be super great immediately, so they're not included either. But Hughes and Kako were the first of a few to go out there as top picks and really disappoint in a way. Nowadays, it's tough to have that conversation because Capo Caco, he's been a little bit too injured this season to really consider him as somebody who is underperforming. And when it comes to Jack Hughes, I mean, that guy is over a point per game now. He is now there. He is finally what Devils fans wanted him to be when they drafted him in 2019. The year after 2019, though, is kind of interesting. Because if you go over the two guys in this year's first and second overall spots, you will find some very high-profile names in Alexi Lafreniere for the New York Rangers, as well as Quinton Byfield of the LA Kings. Now, the reason we're making this video is because I saw this article pop up on thehockeywriters.com. Kings fans should not be concerned with Quinton Byfield's development. And when I saw this piece pop up, I was like, okay, yeah, I don't even need to read the article. I agree. Quinton Byfield is one of the most unique NHL prospects turned rookies we have ever seen. It's been such a long time since we've seen somebody who is this big, who is this agile, who is this calm and collected and offensively gifted as Quinton Byfield. There's no word to describe this guy other than unicorn, because that's how rare these kinds of players are. So when I saw the article pop up, I agreed with it, and I wanted to take a few things from this piece and highlight them in this video, but I also wanted to talk about the other guy that usually gets lumped into this conversation too when you talk about Quinton Byfield of the LA Kings, the guy taken right before him, Alexi Lafreniere of the New York Rangers. Right now, if you go over to the NHL and you take a look at players in the 2020 draft and how they have done so far this year, you'll see that Lucas Raymond is indeed first overall in points. He's a rookie this season, and he's got 48 of them in 65 games. I'm recording this video on Saturday, March 26th. It's 6 p.m. right here on the West Coast. I have to pre-record some videos because I'm going on a trip. So at the time of recording this audio, these stats are accurate. They might not be accurate anymore when you're watching this. Tim Stutzla, second overall, 39 points. Anton Lundell has 38. Mercer, Drysdale, and Jarvis all follow afterwards. And and then you have Alexi Lafreniere, who, at the time of me recording this audio, is seventh overall in the NHL of players from the 2020 draft in points. He's got 23 points in 63 games, good enough for a .37 points per game, which is not great, but okay, it's right there. You have Igor Chinikov, who has 12 points in 54 games at eighth overall, and then tied with Cole Perfetti, albeit in a higher amount of games is Quinton Byfield, who has seven points in 26 games this season for the LA Kings. Now, going over to Lafreniere first and foremost, he's been in a very difficult position the past few years because the way this guy has traversed the QMJHL, just taking control of plays, analyzing what to do, and just being an absolute monster because playing against 15 to 20 year old kids, you're able to do that. The biggest thing with Alexi Lafreniere that I noticed as he transitioned to the NHL was that the game just didn't open up for him as much as it did back then. The NHL is just so much faster, there is so little space compared to the QMJHL, and for most players, there's a difficult transition that you have to make when coming over from that league 
into saying to yourself, okay, well, I got to be like quicker. I got to make these decisions a little bit faster. I got to make these passes a little bit faster. I have to shoot the puck a little bit faster. And all this combined with the opportunities that Lafreniere has been getting, or lack thereof, I guess you could say, because this guy was not really used in the power play at all until the past few weeks. It's really put a little bit of a damper on Alexi Lafreniere and the point production he has, because people will go out there and say, look, like, he's not Connor McDavid. By this time, Connor McDavid was winning Art Ross trophies, and Austin Matthews had already had a Richard. I don't know if that's true, but it feels true. Alexi Lafreniere is in his second NHL season, and he's not even at half a point a game yet. But... When it comes to Alexi Lafreniere, I still want to believe in the smarts. I still want to believe in all the things that made him so good in the QMJHL. Back in the Ramuski system, he just knew what to do almost every time. And it would get to the point that he would get sometimes a little bit too cocky, where he would get into fights he didn't need to get into. He'd get easily agitated because once in a while things wouldn't go his way. And he just had the right to do that because... You know he would go out there after he got a penalty or something and score, like, two goals or whatever. Like, Lafreniere was an absolute monster in the QMJHL because the things that made him so good at hockey allowed themselves to be exploited to the max in that league. In the NHL, you can't just be smart. You can't just know what to do. You can't just have a good shot. You can't just have good positioning. You need to do this stuff fast. You need to make those decisions quicker than the guy beside you, because if you don't make that decision as fast, that guy's going to come in, he's going to steal the puck, and you're not going to have a chance anymore. So, for Alexi Lafreniere, it's all a matter of him really just making sure that machine keeps on turning in his head to be able to process these decisions. And for Quinton Byfield, I mean, look, the guy's second overall. A lot of people went out there and thought that he was going to be like NHL ready, and I was one of them. I kind of felt that he had like 50, 60 plus point potential right out the gate as an 18-year-old. I admit that probably was a bit premature, but for Quinton Byfield, an interesting thing has actually happened with his development so far in the National Hockey League. When he was drafted out of the OHL Sudbury Wolves, Byfield was just an absolute monster. Big, rangy, skilled, he was like a ballerina out there. But the really interesting part about his development was that Byfield, despite being 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", throughout his years in the OHL, wasn't really a power forward. He wasn't really the guy who shoved guys out of his way as he dangled his way to the front of the net and overpowered a goalie by striding hard to the right. He wasn't an Eric Lindros who used his size to his advantage. He was just a guy who was really skilled, but who also happened to be big. Now, you see the entire conversation. This is a quote from the article that I was talking about earlier. It's cited from Todd McClellan from the Has the Kings Quinton Byfield Arrived article on The Athletic from March 23rd. When you are six foot five, you're playing major junior. You don't always have to use all six foot five of you. When you're chosen and drafted because of all your offensive skills, as a younger player, an 18 year old, it's hard to transfer those to the NHL. While you're doing that, what else can you provide? And what else indeed? It's noted in this article in the Hockey Writers, but Quinton Byfield and the way that he's played so far in the LA Kings system, even though he's not producing a ton of points, he's still going out there and actually playing some pretty solid two-way hockey. You even saw this in the small stint he had last year where every game, you know, he had a small sample size of I think it was like six or seven. He was getting more comfortable, more aware, and a little bit more smarter with each passing game. And I think just the way Quinton Byfield perceives the game in general, compiled with his capacity of picking things up and as progression goes along over the next few seasons, it wouldn't surprise me if maybe as soon as 2023 or whatever, we start to see Byfield and Lafreniere having their Jack Hughes year. The year where Hughes came out and started producing over a point per game and being just what exactly it is the LA Kings and the New York Rangers wanted these guys to be when they were drafted. For Byfield, it's going to be tough, especially with Kopitar and Deneau ahead of you on the depth chart, but there still is an opportunity for him to do that. For the Rangers, it's a little different as well because the entire Lafreniere deployment thing, the power play or the lack of power play time, it's really been getting to him and his development, and I think a lot of Rangers fans would cite those aspects of his NHL career so far as being some of the problems in this situation, but 
Either way, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Lafreniere and Byfield and where they can go from here. What their futures look like with the Rangers and the Kings. Do you think these guys are going to get better? And if so, by how much? When do you think we'll see the best out of Lafreniere and or Byfield? Do you see them having their Jack Hughes breakout year where they're all of a sudden over a point per game out of nowhere? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below if you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>